Hey guys, what's up? It's Dark Mick here and welcome back to another video. Today we are doing Theatre of Pain in the Mythic Plus Guide series and this one is going to be a long one. So uh, timestamp wise, there will be all the dungeon footage in the timestamps. If you do not care about mob information and MDT and you just want to see the dungeon footage, timestamps will get you through there and it'll get you through this video a lot quicker. I am conscious that this is going to be a fairly lengthy video being one of the longer dungeons uh, we've seen in Shadowlands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up wing by wing basically in the MDT or sort of, you know, from start to a boss on the MDT, show it live uh, and then go back to MDT, do a full wing to a boss basically and then go over the VOD. So there'll be a fair bit of information thrown at you, but um, there's actually quite a lot of intricate mobs in Theatre of Pain that I honestly didn't realize until I sat down and wrote this guide out. As always... This, uh, these guys are aimed at uh, tanks, you know, moving into that plus 10 area, moving up to that plus 15 area to try and get your mounts. It's absolutely what we're here to do. Uh, I'm actually going to show you the route that we do on the video, but then I'm going to show you two other routes that you will have uh, at your disposal. Theatre of Pain has a fair bit of versatility in regards to the route options that you take. Uh, and I'm going to give you some options that you can find the best one that suits you and your group and what you're comfortable with. So without further ado, let's dive straight into Theatre of Pain. So the opening pull here. What we're going to do is we're going to have our hunter. Now you can use a hunter or a tank, pull these, this entire group here, including the blood horn off to the side to where this number one is basically. So we're going to have a hunter run through turtle, interrupt the ritualist who's going to cast this necrotic bolt. Uh, the reason you need to interrupt it is otherwise it stands there. You want to interrupt it so it moves along. Uh, and the hunter's going to kite it up here and turtle. And then they're going to feign death is the plan while all this runs after them. When all this moves off, we're going to be on our mounts and we're going to hug up the left side and we're going to go stand over here. If the hunter gets the feign death off, cool, or, or, you know, whatever's running it over there, cool, you can all get over here, the mobs can reset, you can go straight into boss. If not, cast a mass res, get them up, go into boss. The tank can do this as well. The biggest thing, as I said, just make sure you get interrupt on the ritualist, get over here uh, and make sure your group runs up. So once that's down, we're going into the very first boss. So we're not pulling any trash. We're going straight into the first boss, which is this little trio of bosses here. Kill order here can vary. Generally, the way I like doing it is Desia, uh, Paceran, and then Sathiel. You can uh, vary between, uh, I think it's Paceran. I don't know how you say it, but you can do Paceran first and then Desia. Um, Sathil's always last, but I like doing Desia first, just full stop all the time now. Uh, Desia has a slam and a mortal strike. Slam hits fairly hard and so does the mortal strike. Just be aware that you can't kite these abilities. I'm pretty sure slam, if you actually run out of range while that's going on, it'll actually act like a fervent strike and slam the closest target to them, uh, which obviously isn't good. So generally getting Desia down first is the preference, especially on uh, high Tyran keys and necrotic weeks where this can become a really, pro uh, really problematic in regards to the frequent malaise. Uh, Pace around next does this Plague Bolt and the Noxious Spores. You just want to make sure that you are not standing in those. Um, there'll be pools on the ground and stuff like that. Just watch out for that and it'll just cast Plague Bolts. Sathiel is actually, it's the one that you always kill last. However, it's the one that you need to ensure that you're interrupting. Searing Death is the cast that you want to be making sure that you're pretty much getting all the kicks that you can rotated through. So Searing Death isn't going out. It's probably the most dangerous thing on this boss is Searing Death. Um, it'll also become, Sathy will also go one with death where they'll become immune basically for 30 seconds. I'm pretty sure, I'm 99% sure that you cannot purge that off. You just pretty much have to uh, either damage through the absorption shield or just wait it out. So you usually don't have too many problems in either waiting it out um, or getting through the shield. However, if it's a higher key, you'll want to get through the shield because it can't be interrupted while they're one with death and those searing death casts will be going off. So you shouldn't have too many issues getting these down. Uh, once they're dead, they don't share health. You have to kill them. Uh, you know, you have to kill them all. Once they're dead, we are going down into the bottom area here. So down into the Chamber of Conquest. And what we're going to do from here is we are going to run and kill these first three mobs here. And then we're going to kill this one. However, I would not suggest pulling all this as one pull. So drop down and we're going to go straight into the chamber of conquest and we're going to kill this uh the first pool is going to be two conscripts and this arbalist here the arbalist have this little jagged quarrel ability that does a fair bit of damage but a single one on its own not going to give you too many problems uh the conscripts just have a melee this cruel slash it deals a fair bit of damage but um 
Again, you shouldn't have too many issues, but definitely don't chain it into one of these mini bosses. You can see here on these exclamation marks, only one of these duelists, these mini bosses will be alive at each checkpoint. So it just depends which one it is. If it's neck, it'll be a whirlwind. You just don't want to stand in. And if it's the other dude, uh, Doc, Doc Ig, uh, he's got a charge you don't want to be in the way of and the brutal leap and a battle trance that you can kick. Um, so just be aware of that. We're actually only going to kill these three, this name mob, and then we're going to turn around and run back out. And we're going to go to the upper barrow. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flick it over to the video and show you that. And then we're going to start off from the upper barrow. So go into the VOD here. You can see the key is starting up now. Uh, and what's going to happen is Teague's the hunter here. You can see her on the right side running down is going to pull these. Now you can see they the contenders actually charge and do a fair bit of dam damage. So she had to pop turtle fairly early. There's the ritualist. So if you get a kick, it'll move a little bit quicker. Teague's just had to leg it away though, but gets off dies, which isn't a problem. We can just get over here and we're going to mass res. So as I said, it doesn't matter if you don't have a hunter or something like that, as long as someone can run them over there and just survive through the charge. So the tank's a good option. Get over there, get a mass res, and you're Gucci to go straight into the first boss. You can also shroud through with a rogue as well, as long as they distract the Bloodhorn, the named mob at the uh, the end of the pack. As long as they distract that one off to the other side that you aren't shrouding on, uh, you can actually get past them even though it's got true sight. So you can see here we are focusing uh, Desia the Decapitator first. You can see that it's got an Enrage, uh, Desia will do as well, and a Fixate. Just getting it down ASAP is definitely the go. Here's the Mortal Strike. So you can see the Mortal Strike chunks for about 30%, and this is a 16 Fortified key, so it's not even a Tyran key. Um, and you've got the Healing Reduction. As I said, Necrotic Weeks with this as well is fairly spicy. Um, you can see the damage coming out. I think a, a Bolt got through there from Sathiel as well. It does a fair bit of damage. So Searing Deaths here, they're the ones that you want to be trying to kick. Um, the Sathi or the Accused, they're the ones that you want to try to be kicked. Here's the one with death. So now you can see that they're immune. So their casts are going to be going through because you can't interrupt them. So you can see that Searing Death is actually just getting free cast there. Um, it's actually not doing as much damage as I thought though. Um, probably has a lot to do as well, I guess, with being a uh, 16 fortified key. So we are... And again, you can see here's the green shit on the ground that actually spawns under you. So you need to move, but then it leaves that green shit on the ground too. I didn't probably explain that very well. It's the, it, it's, it's one of those things where it's fairly obvious in regards to you just don't want to stand in the bad stuff. However, as the tank, try and get interrupts and continue to move them to free space rather than kind of chilling around it. It just means when you need to move, you've got a, a lot more room sort of to go. Um, so we ended up killing Sathiel there. Um... First, I actually don't know why. Generally, if, if you get kicks, Sathiel, you know, isn't going to die first because of the uh, one with death. But we we apparently, we defied the odds. So we're killing Pace around last. Um, generally not the recommended setting though. But honestly, as long as you survive, it doesn't matter what you do, guys. So we are going to finish them off. And then we are going down into the chamber. So down we go here. We've gone up to Zab's wing. So you can see him up the top there. And as I said, we're going to pull these first three. So the double conscript one uh, arbalist, and then we're going to go into the named mob that is up. So you can see here, they don't do a hell of a lot. There's not a hell of a lot to monitor in this pack. However, the conscripts still do hit, uh, you know, fairly decent. Like you can see, I'm getting chunked. I'm in blood DK, so it's natural that I get chunked anyway, but they take a fair bit off. So getting past them, and then we're just going to lead it in to our neck, which is the jewelist that was up. So you can see the whirling blades go out, they spin, you just don't stand in them. Here's an interrupting roar that if you're a caster, you wouldn't be casting when that goes off. And there's a whirlwind that you're going to run out, which is a big circle on the ground. And you'll just want to make sure you get out of it. So there's the whirlwind dodging out of the way, and that's it. So we're going to finish that up. And as I said, once that dies, we're going to head back into the center because we're going to go to the hooky area, the Burrow of Carnage. So I'm going to quickly flick back to the MDT. So we've killed these. We're running back out here and we're going to the upper Burrow of Carnage now. Now, this is where probably the most intricate mobs in Theater of Pain uh, ah, so this first pull here, we're going to do this one diseased horror, and then we're going to do four disgusting refusers, and then we're going to do this one uh, blighted sludge spewer. Now, this sludge spewer is actually probably the most interesting mob in 
this pack here. The Blooded Sludge Spewer, it'll leap to the uh, target that's the furthest away. So it helps if your group is stacked and spread around four yards, um, just so that damage doesn't splash because it does deal en damage to all enemies when it leaps within four yards. So if just if you make a loose stack, but you're not too far away, it'll certainly help with all these mobs as the Disgusting Refusers leap away as well. Sludge Spear will also cast an ability called Decaying Blight. So this is plague damage to an enemy dealt every two seconds, and it reduces the max health of the target by 5% for 30 seconds. So this is obviously not a fantastic cast to have on going on while there's a bunch of damage going out on you. Um, the prior kick that you must get on this, um, or use things like AMS, AMZ, any kind of DR that you've got is Withering Discharge though. So this Withering Discharge inflicts Plague Damage to all players and inflicts them with Withering Blight. Uh, withering Blight is a pretty nasty disease that goes on um, for 30 seconds and it stacks if multiples go off. So the damage just continues to tick on your group. So yeah, make sure that you are kicking Withering Discharge. If you've got any spare kicks, get the Decaying Blights. Uh, when the Sludge Spewer and the Refusers die, they leave little green pools on the ground that you don't want to stand in because if you do stand in them, you end up getting, getting that withering blight uh, disease that I was just talking about that's supplied via discharge. So you really need to be quite wary of what you're doing in this room. Uh, lastly to mention here, the big mob, the diseased horror. The diseased horror is going to have this uh, decaying, decaying strike. You can actually use AMS to uh, negate this debuff going on you, which leaves the Decaying Blight, which is the same as we were talking about before from the Sludge Spewer. So you just need to watch out with that one. Um, meat Shield is the other one. You need to try and kick the Meat Shield because if the Meat Shield goes off, it absorbs all damage, it lasts 30 seconds, and it just slows your pull time right down. So make sure that you are kicking Meat Shields as well if you can. Uh, so we're going to do that pull. We're going to recover and then we're going to do the next pool, which is a butcher, another sludge spewer, and another four disgusting uh, refusers. So, with this one, the new mob of interest here is the butcher. So, the butchers cast devour flesh. Uh, so, you can see it here. Now, you can actually use asphyxiate on this when it is going off uh, and negate the ability altogether. It may come up though as a, uh, as like a grayed out cast bar, but you can actually stun it. So, just know that and be aware of it because if you don't do it and it actually devour flesh goes through um what happens is it just basically chunks you for a large amount of damage and then it heals the butcher for 300 percent of that damage dealt so again slowing your progression through this pack down substantially if that actually gets off be aware if you are going to try and run away when that's going on as well Fervent Strike type mechanic, Devour Flesh will just go on whoever is closest to them and likely mince them. Uh, same thing again, you've got a Sludge Spear, so deal with that in the same way and the Refusers as well, just watch for their leap. Uh, so after that, we are going to get our 20% Prideful. So here is our first Prideful straight after this mob. And then we're going into this pack on the bridge here. So we've got a Rancid... Uh, no, we don't have a Rancid Gas Bag there, sorry. Um, we have this pack on the bridge. So what have we got? We've got a butcher and two spewers here. So the butcher, again, devour flesh with your stuns. Priority kicks, making sure you're getting that withering discharge and anything spare, you're getting the decaying blight. Make sure you get a stun on this devour flesh. Once that pack is dead, prideful, shouldn't have too many issues. We're going to skip these padding gas bags, okay? Now, it doesn't matter which way you go, you end up at the same point. What you need to make sure is, though, that you just watch its pathing point. So... If it's in, if this one's, you know, here and this one's over here, then probably going this way is going to be better because you can literally follow it up. And when it gets around here, you can just sneak in. Um, otherwise, if it's over here, you can run in, run around, whatever. You do not need an invis pot or a shroud to get past these. You just need to watch the pat and move around it. So we're skipping them whichever way you want to go. And it's going to bring us down into here. And it's going to bring us to this next pool. Now, this next pool is quite nasty. It's a diseased horror, a butcher. Uh, two Disgusting Refuses and a Sludge Spewer. So we've covered off most of these mobs. Um, again, stuns on the Devour Flesh, kick the Withering Discharge and dodge the pools on the ground. Make sure you kick the Meat Shield as well as another thing to worry about in this uh, pack. But otherwise, you shouldn't have too many issues. Um, but yeah, it, it's a little bit hairy, as I said. These mobs have a little bit going on with them. This Rancid Gas Bag here will pat up and down here. 
Now, if it's up the top, you can pull it on its own. If it's down the bottom, you can run into the middle of this bridge, not pulling it, and it will tr uh, trigger all these little ones. And you can fight them up here and then fight the gas bag by itself. It just means you don't have to fight them all at once. Um, so take your pick with what you want to do there. If you're fighting the gas bag, you just need to watch out for the vile eruption. It will shart out of its asshole and its mouth um, and it spews crap everywhere. It'll kind of balk a little bit when it goes to do it. So just watch where it's facing and where its back end's facing and just don't be standing in it. Otherwise, you shouldn't have too many issues. Just get it down. The pat wise, you're going to get a blighted sludge spewer in there. So same mechanics with that one. And then you're going to cop uh, five of the disgusting refusers as well. So again, just stay stacked up, spread four yards, kill them as quick as you can. When you get to the end here, the last two uh, mobs before here, this is going to be a 40% prideful here. Now you've got one diseased horror here and you've got one putrid butcher. Now you can, if you're a DK, control undead one of these to take them out of the mix if you're going to have problems. So for example, you could take the, the horror out of this so you didn't have to kick the meat shield and you didn't have to worry about the decaying strike with AMS or the uh, and the blight. And then you could just kill the butcher making sure that you're stunning the devour fleshes. Otherwise, you can get on them both. Um, just be aware if devouring flesh gets off, it certainly does slow your pull down. Same with meat shield. So you just need to be aware of what's going on there. Then we're going to get our 40% prideful and we're taking it straight into gore chop here. Uh, now gore chop, biggest thing with this boss is to avoid getting hooked and making sure that you have a way to survive his tank buster ability, which is called hateful strike. Um, this hits pretty hard, especially on a DK. So you want to be pulling or have runic power are uh, ready to be able to death strike after the big hit um, as it does hurt, especially on higher keys and tyrannical, um, you know, or have your active mitigation rolling if you're another tank iron for shield of the righteous, you know, you know where I'm going with this. Um, the boss will cast a tenderizing smash as well, which hooks all players around him into a circle and then he does a smash. Now, sometimes you will not get hooked in as the tank. Other times you will just be aware of this. There are going to be two ads that spawn and come out through this as well. You just want to be picking them up as you go and just looking for the gaps in the chains to make sure that you're not getting chained and dragged across the floor um, as if that as because if that does happen, it's unnecessary damage, getting stunned, getting a blade, all that kind of stuff you just want to avoid. So we're going to kill him. We've got prideful and then we're going to go up to the top, back to the bar of carnage. We're going to come out here. We're going to turn right and we're going to come back out into the middle section. So we're going to head back to the VOD here and we're going to go through this. So we are back into uh, the middle here and we're heading up to the Burrow of Carnage. So here's that first pool that I was talking about. So there's the Sludge Spewer and here is the Horror. Now, funnily enough, guys, and I'm not even going to lie to you because I'm just not one for bullshit. Um, I didn't know anything about these mobs when we were doing this key. Okay, I, I really didn't. Um, so I AMS the decaying strike from the horror, the first one there out of pure dumb luck. But so that's what you want to do. So that was cool. And we absolutely nutted them down without any issues. I think a meat shield did get off for a little while though. Here's the butcher here with the, uh, so it does the chop and it does the devour flesh. So devour flesh, I don't even have asphyxiate, but devour flesh, remember, is the thing that you want to stun. So there it is there. You want to be stunning that. So you can see there he hit me and he probably healed for like 15% area or something like that, which is another 15% damage that we have to do to the mob. So right now it'd be like 30% instead of 55. Um, so just be aware of that. Here comes another devour flesh now. Again, no stun back to 60%. So you can see just how much time you are actually losing on these mobs by not making sure that you've got a stun now. Now I have a stun for this next one, but I don't think I even knew about devour flesh and what it even, you know, the intricacies behind it to even stun it i don't there it goes again so i'd like to think i'm a pretty good example to you guys as to what not to do here um and hopefully you can sort of heed my words and learn from me there because that's really bad all right so we are on to our first prideful here 20 percent prideful um which is good moving into the bridge pack because the bridge pack is actually a little bit nasty here so i don't mind getting prideful here it's an all right spot to get prideful uh, so drop an AMZ here. AMZ is great as a DK. Um, if you've got prideful going on, especially as the stacks get up, we've actually got three hubba bubba bubbles in this run, which was pretty pog. 
Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to use it uh, on Pridefuls, guys. It, it's really nice to help out your healer. So we're going to get our Prideful down here and then we are moving into the bridge pack here. There's a banner there if you've got a Necro Lord in your group. Uh, so this one here, we've got the Butcher and the Double uh, Sludge Spewers. So again, with the Sludge Spewers, the Withering Discharge, you know, they're the things that you want to try and kick when you can. Uh, and the Butcher is the thing that you want to stun. So you can see uh, Cap Totem works on it, Leg Sweeper work on it, Asphyxiate, any any stun is going to work on it. Just make sure you stun it when it goes to Devour Flesh. Um, and then the Decaying Filth is the second thing that you want to be interrupting on the Sludge Spewers. The Withering Plague is the thing that you want to be focusing to kick. So we get the bridge down without too many issues. Now we're just checking which way uh, we've got pats on the uh, gas bags here, because remember, we're not killing these gas bags. Both fairly ordinary pats here. So that one's, you know, just chilling there and waiting, and the other side was just as crap. So what we're going to do is we are going to sneak up on this one and move around. Now, you don't have to go in and go left. Teague's debated me hard here. You can just, you can just wait, okay? <laughs> Don't, don't follow, don't follow her. Don't do it. Um, so it gets away and we all run through. So no invis pot, no shroud, no silly mechanics needed. Just wait for it and run. We're coming around the corner here. Here's this ugly pool that I was talking about. So we got a butcher here. We got a horror here. And then we've got the little refuses. And I don't think from memory there was any sludge spewers in this. Was there? No, there's, there's one. Okay. So it was, it was the one sludge spewer. So Again, devouring flesh is probably the biggest thing in here, just to be aware of. You can see that uh, decaying strike, which you can negate with AMS, stacks up as well. So I'm actually at a uh, negative 15% HP uh, debuff at the moment. So, you know, it's not too big of an issue, but the more stacks you get, the bigger your pulls, the more damage that's going out and the higher the key. Obviously, you know, the less ideal that is to be 20% down, 25% down on HP now. So make sure you're using your AMS, even possibly holding it on, um, you know, as the fight goes longer to try and sort of avoid a debuff stack of that. It is a really long debuff. It's a 30 second debuff. So, you you know, you're not going to be able to dodge all of them, but uh, just be aware of that. Now we're moving into the middle here and we're pulling all the little ones and the gas bag. Remember what I said though, you could have, we could have waited for the gas bag to get up the top and then we could have pulled that on its own or if it was padding down the other end, we could have just grabbed that. Uh, we could have run into the middle, got the little ones and then moved out. Making sure that we're getting the uh, withering plague stacks or withering plague interrupts there. So we actually did a really good job of that. Here's the gas bags vial eruption that I was talking about at his butt and his mouth. So just making sure we watch out for that, dodging the pools on the ground because you don't want to be standing in them uh, and getting him down. So fair bit of damage actually goes out on that pool. Unless you've got CDs, I wouldn't say it's the most ideal situation to pull them uh, all the, the bridge, the little packs from the side and the gas bag at once there. So then we're moving into these last two. Remember what I said, you can control undead them. I didn't know that. I mean, it would be obvious, but I didn't know it to even try it. Um, so you can use control undead here if you want to make your life easier. Okay. So devouring flesh again, stun. So I, so I make these videos and I see asphyxiate sitting there and it just makes me sad inside. Um, but yeah, make sure you're stunning. Oh God, look to I just stunned the horror. Make sure you are stunning devouring flesh. Okay. Bad, 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 bad. Um, even a single grip to, to reset the cast would be better, you know, anything, but here we are. This is how it goes. So we're going to kill that and we're going to get our 40% prideful. Okay. So this is our second prideful of the dungeon right before gore shock, giving us prideful to go into this boss, which is generally a long boss. And I like having prideful on this boss. So that's why it's in the route like this. So we are going to nuke this pride down. You guys all know how prideful works. So we're killing prideful. We're using our hubba bubba shields to make it nice and easy for Chewy. And then we're moving into gore chop. Now gore chop, as I said, as the tank, you just need to make sure that you've got active mitigation rolling or RP or souls are saved away to recover from the hateful strike that comes out. Um, you can see hateful strike coming out now. Hits fairly hard. Here are these chains. There is always uh, two gaps in the chains. You just need to watch for where they are. Wait for this. Just get through it and then move off to the side when the last sort of piece of that puzzle is coming through. The two ads, making sure that you are picking them up as the tank. 
when you kill the ads they'll drop those little green pools as well so again just make sure that you're not standing them give your melee room you can see this boss absolutely melted there's that tenderizing smash so it grips everyone in and sometimes it does grip the tank in other times i have not been affected by it so just watch that also watch when you get overlaps of the chains with hateful strikes don't go running through your gap and accidentally give your back to the boss because you can get overlaps with hateful strikes with that if you take a hateful strike to the back you are absolutely kachowed um so just be careful there i just watched cars hence kachow all right so he's down and we're going to move up into these chains and we are going back into the middle so up and to the right when we come out of here and then we are moving off into the next section so let's head back to mdt here so we've just come out of Gorchop's room. We're running down here and now we are going to hands here. Okay. We're going to the altar of agony. So the altar of agony, what we're going to do here is we're going to do six ghastly shackled. They're not called ghastly. We're going to do six shackled souls. Okay. We're going to pull these and we're going to pull them back to line of sight around this door here. Then we're going to run up and we're going to pull this next six and we're going to line of sight them around this door. It's actually like here, this door here okay makes it nice and easy um they will cast this uh bind soul wait is it bind soul it's bind soul or it's soul touch they cast one of them um it's bind soul basically you just want to make sure that you're kicking that use your amz on them melt them down stuns cap totems leg sweeps the works um you shouldn't have too many issues just be aware when you're collecting them they do do a little bit of damage off the bat especially when you do pull all of them um so just be aware of that don't get yourself killed pulling them but six line of sight six line of sight pew pew uh once that is done we are pulling the portal guardian here okay now the portal guardian deals a pretty hefty amount of damage via its soul storm ability so soul storm is a pretty woofing channeling uh ability that deals a fair bit of damage the mob can also mark a player with shadow vulnerability which increases their shadow damage taken by 30 percent. so you just need to be watching out for that um yeah so just just be aware of what's going on with this one it is a fair bit of damage but you're pulling it by itself so you shouldn't have too many issues uh after that we're going into this sort of maze and it's not really a maze but you do get a left and a right option through it and then which will take you to uh, platforms which you will then get a left and a right option from the platform as well so you'll have two options to go left or right basically in this pathway that i'm showing you we are going left which takes us to this platform, which takes us to a portal, which takes us over to this platform. And then we're going left again, which is going to take us to this platform over here. It's going to take us through to here. There'll be a portal, which will take us all the way over to here. So left, left is on this pathway we're doing here. So we're going to go straight over to uh, this pack here, which is one maniacal soul binder and three shackled souls. Really important guys as the tank that you go first here, unless they have like a shadow meld or a stealth, if they go over first, they're going to die because when you land, you pretty much get put in combat straight away. Uh, the We've already dealt with these little shackled souls and the bind souls. The new mob that you'll be dealing with here is the uh, soul binder here. And the big one for this is that you do not want to let any of these necrotic bolts uh, go through or these volleys. These actually really hurt. The necrotic bolts nearly one-shot people on higher keys. Just watch out for this. Soul corruption goes out as well, but your healer can just dispel that one. So once you've dealt with them, stuns, kicks, the works, you're going to go through the portal and you're going to land over here. Actually, I think you land here. I think you land here. Uh, this next pack is a little bit nasty as well. So you've got a portal guardian here that we dealt with at the start here. And then you've got the soul binder and the magus here. So again, uh, the soul binder, the necrotic bolt, the necrotic volley, the soul corruption to dispel. Uh, you've also got this new mob now, the Bone Magus. And the Bone Magus's big one is Bone Spear. These Bone Spears absolutely rail people. So you need to be making sure that you are kicking them. If you are a DK, you can, of course, control Undead here just to take one mob out of the pack and make your life easy, which is absolutely advised if you are going to have trouble in killing it. We're actually going to spawn our 60% Prideful here as well. Um, so, you know, it, it is worth, if it's going to make your life easier, just taking one out. If you take one out, you are still proccing Prideful. You're like 0.9% over. Um, but it means that you can either proc the Prideful when this Magus dies. Say if you control the Soulbinder or whichever one you control, it doesn't matter. 
it means that when you're going to be focusing the portal guardian as soon as the second mob if you've controlled one dies you'll get prideful then you could take it into the uh magus pack over here you could delete one of these and you could release it and kill the two or you could kill the three if you were confident that you weren't going to die to bone spears and you had interrupts or stuns down um but that's the most important thing so do whatever's going to be comfortable here but we're going to kill these three we're going to get our 60 percent prideful we're then going to kill these two you can drag these in at any time if you feel comfortable um, either with the prideful whatever you want to do but otherwise get your prideful kill them and then we're going left again with the orb that drops from the portal guardian here and it's taking over taking us over to this platform over here once we go over to this uh, platform here we've got two nefarious dark speakers big thing with them is they'll do this uh spirit frost which you just kick the cast big one is death winds it's a tornado that spawns in front of them and goes straight out in whatever direction they are facing if you get hit by it you end up in a wardrobe in narnia and it's just not where you want to be so just be aware of this don't stand in the dps tornado it's bad for you once that's done we're going through the portal up the end and it's taking us all the way over to the end here where we're going to have one nefarious death speaker landing in combat with uh one magus so again bone spear the big one there and then we're going to have a soul binder as well with the bolts and the volleys and the soul corruption that your healer can dispel so once that is dead we are moving over to the boss here which is Kulthorok. Now, Kulthorok is a bit of a dick, okay? From a tank point of view, you absolutely have nothing really to do, but for your group, um, this is pretty spicy, and we generally want to commit either a hero here, or you can line a different route. I'll show you up to have Prideful here, whatever you'd like to do. Your group is going to be managing uh, Draw Soul, pretty much. So Draw Soul is the, the big sort of uh, underpinning point of this fight. Okay, like, look at all this rubbish. I okay anyway uh so your group's going to be managing draw soul it'll get cast on two players in your group at a time and they need to chase their soul down and what they can do is they can use the little hands around the platform to bait their soul into which makes picking them up easier easier when they catch their soul they get a 30 percent damage buff if they don't catch it they become mc'd um the boss can bug out the hands can bug out there can be all type of issues the good news is as a tank you just need to make sure you stay in melee range if you move out of melee range it'll do a cast that i don't even know where it is in here but it'll do a cast if you if you're too far away it's a nuke you can interrupt it and you can use it to delay mechanics if that's what you were going for but otherwise just stay within melee range of the boss and hope your group does it right so once that's dead we're going through the portal down and we're coming back into the chamber here and we're into the last wing which is revisiting the one we went first which is the chamber of conquest and zab's wing so Let's head back to the VOD here. So we've just come out of Gorechop's room back into the VOD, going back into the middle here, and here comes this first pool. Now, I'm supposed to do half here, okay? Half is six, guys. I didn't know half was six until I made this video. I am grabbing... Uh, uh, I think there's eight. I think there might be eight, and I miss old mate Joe up here. Um, One, two three four five six seven uh, there's i think there's seven maybe uh there's seven or they're eight but yeah you can see hubba bubba's going down here bind souls go out stuns grips mass grips single grips uh interrupts whatever you've got typhoons whatever ability you've got to get them off their kicks uh their bind soul casts just make sure you do it shouldn't have too many problems though they do melt if you've got a dk amz it's extremely powerful uh make sure you're using it there uh, and that's pretty much it. If it's shite, we'll make sure you run away. So then we're going to go through and we're going to grab the last six that would be at the end if you weren't a retard. So I am coming up the end here and I am grabbing the last four here. So I grabbed eight. So I'm grabbing the last four and I'm going to line aside them around the corner here. Just watching out, getting whatever buying souls I can get here. And we're just going to nuke them down ASAP and they're dead. And then we're going to go on to this portal guardian down here. Now the portal guardian, as I said, you can see the uh, shadow uh, debuff that causes 30% extra shadow damage to go out when on Teagues. I can't remember what it's called. Um, uh, I don't know. V shadow more damage ability thing. Um, so you can see that actually goes out on Teagues on a unit frame here. Uh, and Chewy really quick with the dispel there. So there it is there, uh, Cheto Vulnerability or something. So Chewy dispels it. Here's the Soul Storm here. So again, AMS, really nice for the Soul Storm here because you can see this is through 
AMS. This is shadow damage. So this is through a DR. And you can see it still pumps out a fair bit of damage. So higher fork keys, no AMS going on. That's going to put out a fair bit of damage. Once this portal guardian drops, it is going to drop a green orb. There's the green orb here. We're going to pick it up once the shade is dead. This is that really annoying thing with uh, shades with spiteful on this uh, place as well. You can't go through portals and things like that if you're in combat with them. So we're going left. So you pick it up, you dump it in the left little uh, hole there, and then you are going through. You can see Demise was just ahead of me and had to shadow meld there. Nope. No, he didn't. Must have just got over and saved him in time. Thought he got over and had to mail, but he didn't. Um, so again here, the souls with the bind soul kicks, we're trying to get the necrotic bolts are what we really want to get though, uh, just to make sure that they're not going through. We're dropping AMZ just to make sure if any kicks do get through. It's not a big issue, but the bolts and the volley, they're what we generally want to be trying to lock down and we're doing a pretty decent job of it here without any issues. So we've got all that down. Here comes a volley. Demise actually got, I don't know if Demise got stomped by a shade yeah i think it was a shade i don't think a cast got through so it was a shade but here comes a volley that gets through okay and this will give you an idea of how much damage this does so volley's about to go through from the soul binder and two people dead so yeah volleys bolts make sure you kick them so and these platforms are really obviously bad for spiteful as well with everybody running around so we're going to get everybody back and we're going through the portal then we're going down to this next pool here. So the next pool is going to have a, another uh, portal guardian in it and the Magus and the Soulbinder. Now, as I said, if you want to, just take a mob out here. So I control dead on the Magus here and then we don't have to worry about it. So we're going to proc our prideful uh, once, these, uh, once the smaller mob dies, the Soulbinder pretty much. So we're going to get this portal guardian down again using AMZ here on the portal guardian to try and make life a little bit easier. I'm trying to get all of these bolts interrupted on the soul binder so that's the main thing if you can survive the storm and you get you know you're going to kill it before another one pops you've got no issues um prideful coming out here so i'm not sure if i release my magus while prideful's going on or what i do so we'll just cruise along here for a little bit because we all know how prideful works we're going to get the mobs behind me too to the other side of me to the left of this platform so it's about to die now, and now we're going into these two here. So the Magus, the Grave Spikes, the Bone Spear, though, remember that is the big one that you want to be getting. So uh, making sure that we interrupt the Bone Spears here, you can see a Bone Spear actually gets off there, and it hits me quite hard. Um, so again, just make sure... Actually, was it a Bone Spear? God, I'm, I'm, the best, I'm the best guide maker. Here it comes here. Bone Spear gets off. Hits me for 60% of my health, okay? So and I'm a tank, all right? So if you're not a tank, you, you can imagine what that does to you. So I drop my controlled Magus near the end of that other one. Um, if you don't have the kicks to manage those bone spears, just play it safe and do it afterwards. Grabbing the portal from the portal guardian coming up. We're going left again, remember? In this maze, in this route, we're going left, left. And then we are going through the portal over to this other side here. And then we're going to have our two dark speakers here. The spirit frosts, you can just kick them. You can't... Uh, relocate these with grips they're not mobile or they're not i don't even know they're not malleable malleably movable uh via death grip so you just need to make sure that you're dodging and interrupting to bring them together you can see the death winds that's the big dps tornado that gives you a buff if you stand in it and sends you packing to narnia you just don't want to stand in it okay it's got a pretty clear telegraph of where it's going you've got enough time to get out of the way just make sure you're moving but mistakes will happen and you know people get hit by this stuff so don't stress if it does it's just something to improve on next time. So they're dead. And then we are going to once again deal with the spiteful. And then we are moving through our portal. We're going to our last platform over here. One death speaker, one magus, and one soulbinder. Again, looking out for the um, bone spears, the necrotic bolts, the necrotic volley. And then we're looking out for our DPS tornadoes too. There's a lot of damage that goes out on this platform, guys. A lot, a lot of damage. So yeah, try and get through that as best as you can. Then they're dead and we're off to the hands boss here. We've got hero that is just about to come up as well. So I'm absolutely assuming that we'll hero on boss once it's up in 10 seconds. So now we're going into hands boss. Uh, I don't know if I move far away enough for this to show you guys there's a cast on this or not. We'll find out. Um, but you can see the little hands that spawn around the platform or you'll be get a chance to see them. 
where your group there is one just next to me where a group uh, where you can choose to trap your soul in if you set up behind it when it's about to draw soul on you one thing uh as well you know use am amz here as well your group will be taking a absolute bucket load of damage uh on this boss it's pretty hectic you really just need to watch out for it um but as the tank again as i said it's it's like a training dummy for you you are you are doing nothing for this entire fight as the tank so yeah just just enjoy it and blame everybody else if anything goes wrong because it's just not your fault so we're going to get through this one we're going to kill it we're going back through this portal which is going to take us into the middle and we're going to our last wing zab's wing the chamber of conquest there so back to mdt here so we've just come out of here we're running down here and we're coming into our uh chamber of conquest wing zab's wing we've killed this we've killed this we're on to this mob here so when we kill this mob here remember one of these is going to be up um if it's haruga it's going to have this ricocheting blade just make sure that you're spreading out and battle trance which you can interrupt uh if it's heaven here he'll do this colossus smash and a ground smash move out of the ground smash colossus smash means you're going to take more damage once that's on you and we're going to proc our next prideful our 80 percent prideful off whichever one is up just be aware this pack here will pat all the way sort of down to here so don't be fighting it up here you do not want to chain this into this especially or you don't want to chain it with prideful either so just be aware of that once uh this is dead we'll kill prideful and then we'll go into this pack now few options on this pack as well if you are going to have issues with it or you are having issues with it in your group you can control undead on the captain and kill the conscripts and the arbalist so you're going to have two conscripts two arbalists in this with the captain you can control undead on the captain if you don't have control undead you can cc the captain and you can actually pull these and run up and line of sight them here just to get them all clumped up so you can kill them asap um another way that you can do it is you can just get prideful and murder them all do whatever you're comfortable with but there's no shame in ccing the captain pulling these line of sighting them up around the corner you know around this corner is generally the safest option and nuking them all down coming back and getting the captain uh once the uh with the captain as well he'll do a demoralizing shout reduces the damage done by all enemies by 50 percent. so you want to make sure that you're kicking that he'll do a shield bash as well which will interrupt so just watch out for that uh and then we're going to move on to our next mini boss which is going to be one of these again so if it's wreck he'll have the whirlwind make sure you're moving out of the whirlwind and if it's advent he'll have the ricocheting blade so spreading again and the seismic stomp to move out of kill that and then we're on to zav zav um zav's an interesting boss like he hits fairly hard the brutal combo that he does uh here it is here series of brutal melee strikes that inflict increasing physical damage to their target um it hits pretty hard so pulling runic power making sure that you've got the ability to death strike after that or if you're a different kind of tank iron fur rolling uh, if you're purifying brewer celestial brew up shield of the righteous you know where i'm going make sure your mitigation's rolling um he'll have three abilities that he'll cast in a random sequence that you need to move from as well so there'll be a frontal smash there'll be a massive cleave that takes up half of this encounter space there'll also be a slam that you just need to move out of two of your party members throughout this encounter will be getting selected to go down and fight in the arena below whoever has cds pretty much gets to kill the other one they come up they get a damage buff and you want them to use their cds then um and that is pretty much it he'll also drop a banner sorry you need to switch to this banner every time the oppressive banner is up it will slow your movement speed because he's got these three chained abilities that he'll do with the uh frontal the massive cleave uh and the crushing slam if the banner's down and you're unable to move out of that you will most likely die on higher keys especially on a tyrannical setting so just make sure when the banner gets dropped as the tank you're moving zav over next to the banner switching to the banner and killing the banner asap once that's done you're going to move off the edge you're going to run into the middle and you're going to come up to the last boss area mordratha so let's head back to the vod here all right so we are running back up into the middle here we are coming to the chamber of conquest so here's that pack of three we killed there was the first mini boss we're coming in we're going around to the left here and we've got uh heaven the breaker here so this was the uh colossus smash mob so again he really does not do a hell of a lot here's the ground smash i uh, don't even know if i mentioned M move out of it it's very very obvious there's colossus smash uh and again you just burn him down you're not gonna have too many problems with that so kill him kill him there's that pad i was talking about they come down to like there so just make sure you're not fighting around here 
We're going to kill him and then we're going to get our prideful. So prideful spawning now. You guys all know what the go is with prideful and we're just pride and prideful here. Prideful's up and we are not going to CC anything, okay? We are just going to go in and nut it all out. Big thing, make sure you're getting the interrupt on the captain's demoralizing shout. Otherwise, just nuking it all down. So there's the shield bash going off from the captain. There's the demo shout, making sure we kick it. If you've got CDs and you've got a whole lot of DPS, you can absolutely murder this quickly. However, two Arbalists with that Jagged Quarrel will actually do quite a bit of damage that your healer has to put up with. So just be aware of that. There is a fair bit of damage going out throughout this, even though it might not look like it. So we're going to finish those up and then we're going to get our last mini boss here. So mini boss here is Wreck. So Wreck has the, uh, I want to say the, it's either the Ricocheting Blade or the Whirlwind because that's what either of them has. So we'll find out. I'm balancing blow. So you can see that's a fairly large hit. There's the Whirlwind. So moving out of the Whirlwind, I'm balancing blow, you know, have active mitigation rolling for it, but it doesn't hit that hard where it's a huge problem. I actually parry that one, get wrecked full. Uh, so we are going to finish this and then we are moving up i might have dodged it maybe um we are going to move up to zav here okay so moving up to zav um so this is the the tank the brutal combo that you got to live through there's the three ability sequence as well and then there's the banner that you're responsible with other tanks too. so here's the brutal combo so you can three see three strikes there that hit fairly hard banners up so i'm moving the boss over next to the banner and we're going to switch to the banner straight away so killing this banner uh, and here comes this uh, three combo I was talking about. So the crushing slams, the frontal, massive cleave. You can see it takes up half the encounter space. If the banner's down, you're too slow to move out. Move out, And the deafening crash is the big circle that you need to move out of. So that is basically the fight. Here's your two DPS getting sent down the bottom to fight. So whoever has cooldowns up, basically let the other... Uh, make sure that they're the person that wins so if the other person doesn't have any cooldowns make sure that uh you know the person with the cooldowns kills the person they go down with they're going to come back up banners spawn through this stage as well so there'll be you and another dps and then a healer up here you guys need to try and kill the banner you'll be getting brutal comboed through this as well and they'll also move to his little sequence so here is a massive cleave coming through here that i nearly get hit by Deafening crash moving out of the circle and then there'll be the frontal coming last. The order of that is always random. So just be aware of that and know what he does. So we're going to get to the end of Zav here without too many issues. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And then we are moving back into the middle. I'm not going to bother going back to MDT for this because it's the last boss. It's the Bloodhorn up the top that we left and the last boss. Now you can see we're at 97.42. So we've left the Bloodhorn up the top to get Prideful up. So we're going to have Prideful. We're eventually going to have Hero uh, for the second stage or the second phase of the last boss as well. Um, so I, I actually really like this route in that regard. So as soon as you come up, by the way, if you leave the Bloodhorn, you can see I was straight into combat. So just be aware of that tank needs to go up first and just be aware that if you leave the Bloodhorn, if you do the skip at the start, when you come up, you will be in combat straight away. Now you can see this raging tantrum that went off here. Uh, if you have a hunter, a druid, a rogue, they can actually soothe this uh, tantrum and just stop it all together and stop the damage from going out. So if you have those classes, make sure they get on that tantrum ASAP. We had Teagues do it, but it means the next one's going to go through because we only had one option for that. Uh, so killing the Bloodhorn. The Bloodhorn is going to give us our last Prideful, which we're going to take into that last boss and we're going to have here up for it as well. So you can see here the Raging Tantrum. Oh, it's actually Teagues managed to get that too. What a weapon. Um, so this last boss, Mordretha, has two phases so throughout the fight the boss will cast a tank buster ability called reaping scythe it's a two hit style tank buster as well um so it's physical damage and magical damage after it kind of like a car in dos so you're going to want to be using your active mitigation and your cds around that reaping scythe especially as higher keys progress and tyran and all that jazz fits into it uh so We'll talk about a little bit more about this boss as we get into it. So finishing up this pride here. Okay, so we'll kill the prideful. One other thing to note, guys, too, I'll just pause this. One other thing to note um, with this route is when you come up, when you're fighting the Bloodhorn, the boss RP will be going. So it means that when you kill it, you can go straight in with prideful uh, and lust, or if that's your option, um, versus having to wait for boss RP. So it's another reason that I like this route. So... Uh, straight into Mordretha here now as I mentioned two-phase fight the first thing we're going to focus on is reaping scythe so moving the boss in a little bit 
Um, there's a reason for that too, and I'll touch on it in a minute. So here is Reaping Scythe. Remember, physical and then magical, and you can see that chunks, okay? About 60 to 70% on a hit there. Dark Devastation is a beam that goes on, and that's the reason that you want to bring Mordrathar into the encounter space a little bit, so people have room to move around. If you're stuck on an edge, it can sort of um, force people to not have the area to move around the beam, and they can get caught, and that's bad tank positioning, so you just need to be aware of that. Mordrathar will also do this thing, Echoes of Carnage here. Uh, with Echoes of Carnage, you can actually get uh, two options. So you'll either get ghosts that fight each other that you need to move, or there'll be these charging things that go across the platform. They're like, they look like rhinoceroses, I think, but they will go across as well. Um, so that triggers at 50% Echoes of Carnage. So you just need to make sure that you're not getting hit by the charges or you're not standing in the fighty, uh, with the fighty people there. The uh, Mordrath will also cast a thing called Manifest Death. Uh, you can watch the timer on that. And that's actually the thing that, here it is up here. It spawns the ad. So manifest death. So here's the ads from Echoing Carnage. So just making sure that we move out of that. Here's the tank buster reaping scythe again. Big hits. Uh, this boss is absolutely melting though. So here comes, we're going to get manifest death in five seconds. So here's the beam dark devastation. Here's manifest death. Now, if... I was a good DK, okay? And I knew things that I know now. Manifest Death is about to go off. Manifest Death is when the circles spawn around you. When they uh, finish up, you know, there's a rift that sucks you in, this grasping rift. These Manifest Death circle around you, it expires and it drops an ad. If you AMS Manifest Death, you do not get an ad. So that's one less ad that your group has to deal with in regards to interrupting, bringing in, stunning, mass gripping, whatever. It's one thing that you can avoid doing. So be aware of that. So here comes Manifest Death. Here comes the Grasping Rift. And then comes here comes Manifest Death. So uh, you'll get Reaping Scythe through this as well. So just watch out for that overlay. We've got our little uh, people again here. And I'm just going to grip the ads up that come out because I didn't AMS it to avoid my ad. But you can just mass grip all of them uh, and then finish off nuking the boss. So... The last boss, um, I know a lot of people get really concerned about, but it's it's not it's not too bad once you kind of know what's going on. Um, it's just it's about surviving the tank buster, surviving through the ads phase. If you get too close to that grasping rift as well, the thing that's pulling you in. Remember, you've got death's advance, you've got stampeding roar as a druid and things like that. Um, but you get stunned if you get hit by that rift too. So just be aware of that. That's not obviously something you want to do. You want to be dodging dark devastation. You want to be watching your echoes of carnage. If it's the fighty people, don't stand on them. Watch the charges as they're coming through, especially if it overlaps with the dark devastation, which is the big beam that'll move. And it moves around 30 degrees. Um, so yeah, just be aware of that. So I, I know I'm really conscious about how long I've been talking for guys, but I just want to show you two more routes really quickly these will be in the pinned comment and it's it's purely just if you want something different okay so the first one i'm going to show you is you can come down no skips at the start kill this pack then kill this blood horn if you're really frisky pull it all together if not kill these three they're not linked then do the blood horn by itself kill the first boss go down here then what you're going to do is you're going to come all the way through zav's wing here the chamber of conquest you are going to play this all the way to the end like normal and then you're going to come down then what you're going to do is you're going to go to the upper barrow of carnage you're going to do this pull this pull and then you're going to go back out to the hands wing okay so coming back out to the hands wing here and i'll have all this noted for you you're then going to pull this six pack of ghosts here around the corner you're then going to invis pot from here and you're going to skip these six from here you're going to do the portal guardian this pack you're going to go left kill this you're then going to go right and end up over here you're going to kill these this two here this pack over here when you get there uh i think is that going to do is that going to be my prideful yeah it is so you'll kill these you'll spawn prideful once these uh once this uh, i think once the big one dies once the dark speaker dies so kill these evenly you'll spawn prideful that means you'll have sp uh, prideful for cult rock here then kill that come down go back into the upper borough of carnage you've killed these remember run through finish this dodge the gas bag here same down here as normal this is going to proc your 100 prideful prideful on gore chop kill gore chop come back up to the middle 
take your uh, route up to the middle boss rp and hero on the last boss so that is a different kind of route that you can do in here and again i'll write up all the notes in it so you guys know what you're doing okay and the last route that i'm going to show you guys is one from mandel and co and i like this one as well you're going to come down kill these three or group whatever you're going to do again so you can kill these three and then the blood horn or you can do it all together kill the first boss then come down you're going to go through zab's wing like normal kill 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 you're going to shroud or invis this guard captain pack here so get uh you're skipping this kill this mob here your mini boss you're going to get prideful first boss you're going to come down then back into the oops you're going to come down into the center here and you're going to go to the hands wing you're going to go to the altar of agony coming down here half the spirits to line of sight half the spirits to line of sight kill the portal guardian you're then going to go left you're going to get this maniacal soul bender pack here soul binder pack here you're going to come over onto this uh platform here you're going to do the portal guardian and these two you're then going to kill these two maguses over to the side like we did in the normal one you're then going to go right on your next one so you're going left then right coming over to this middle one you're going to kill this middle pack you're then going to kill the two bone maguses off to the side you're then coming over to this platform here as a dk and this is very reliant around the dk if you want to do it in this way mc this bone magus here kill these release the bone magus over here and it will proc prideful for you which you can then take straight into Colthrock. if you don't have a dk you can kill them over there and just run with prideful but obviously if you wanted to get further up time on prideful you can release your mc here kill it take it straight onto the boss coming back out into the middle and you're going to gore chop swing you can then split this into two pools like we did in the video killing this one skipping these uh, rancid gas bags so you can see a common theme here coming down the bottom here you can control undead either one of these here so dependent on what you want to do uh you can control undead the horror here kill this one kill gorchop here uh with you won't have a prideful for that so you'll kill gorchop here then you'll come up to the middle with your mc where am i going come up to the middle with your mc uh release your mc proc your prideful come straight up into boss so three routes for you guys for your consideration they're all in the pin comment below i know this was a long one guys but i think it's a dungeon that a lot of people are going to be quite worried about in that aspect as well so hopefully this gives you the confidence uh and some ideas to go in with your group to be able to knock out your 15 achieve or your plus 10 or wherever you're trying to go with this um as always thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video guys like comment subscribe come find me in my discord come say hi to me on twitch i really appreciate it i'll see you all next time see you fam